I'd like to greet everyone today on the 27th, 27th of the 12th, 2017. This is, this is the midweek teaching of Paradise Now Church, Brisbane, JTCM Mission. My wife and I are returned back from New York City, Crusade, New York, New York, Crusade, yesterday. It's a great trip back. Everything worked well. Brother Osara, New Ola, as usual, and his wife, very faithful to the ministry of Christ. And not only to the ministry, but also to my family and I. Take my hat off to Brother Osara. Kindness and faithfulness. Promptness. When asked to do something, there's no complaining or whinging or bitterness. It's like the men of David. They asked David, what do, you, what do you want us to do? We know God's with you and we'll do it. I consider Brother Isara as my armour bearer in the spiritual realm. But anyway, we go on with the message today. And we're going to be reading out the New Testament in Luke. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, what a wonderful saviour we serve, Jesus. What a wonderful saviour is Jesus, my Lord. What a wonderful saviour is he. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. And I'm righteous and holy in him. Yes, I'm righteous and holy in him. That's why Paul the Apostle said to the Corinthians, you know, I, do you realize you're in Christ? Have you forgotten that you're in Christ? Your behavior is not paralleling your behavior. Your attitude your be and behavior is not lining up with the word. Amen. So let's read out of Luke today. Luke 12 and the verses 22. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Likewise, or should I say, life is more than food and the body is more, the body is more than clothing. Bear with me a minute. Glory to the Lamb. So, we're in Luke 12, verse 24. Uh, four. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much, of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then... God so clothes the grass 
which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. How much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourself money bags which do not grow old a treasure in the heavens that does not fall or fail where no thief approaches nor moth destroys for where your treasure is there your heart will be also when I uh, read verse 33 there Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. Every time I think of that, I think of Sister Sue. And I think of Sister Jovi. They're, they're great givers. They store their treasure in heaven. They're not bogged down with money. We know the Edemic person's bogged down with money, always worried about money, always worried about, oh, I can't do this and I can't give that and what about me and they got that and I've got this. They just don't get on with the job. But those who store their treasure in heaven, they know everything's secure, everything's safe, everything's going well. There's nothing to worry about. I've done a goodly thing. I've done what the Master has said. All is well with my soul. Amen. They know things are going to work for them. Because they've done it in the love of the Lord. Those who do things in the love of the Lord and love for the Lord, ultimately, and love for their neighbour, and love for their minister, and love for their brother, and love for their sister, you can be assured there's a great reward in this life and the next. There will be a reward there. We're guaranteed that. So we don't have to worry. We need to take faith and deal with the issues at hand that we face at the moment. That's why I'm so dead against churches who have millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of dollars sitting in the bank, sitting in their coffers. Use it. Use it for the glory of the Lord and the benefit of brothers and sisters first and then the others come next. Hallelujah. Jesus looks after his people first, number one, priority. Right? People say, well, he left, left the 99 to go and find the one. Well, he was looking after the 99. He, he, he was putting them in a position where they needed to use fame. They weren't being 
uh, mollycoddled. They, they, they won't be put. They won't, Jesus doesn't put people in cotton wool. He stretches them. He he wants people to realise the measure of faith he's given them. You know very well. I I, I don't believe in faith uh, growing. I believe in people coming to a revelation, a realisation and a recognition of the measure of faith that the Lord has given them. Hallelujah. Through each experience. Wow. I have got the faith to do that. Then it gets to the next situation. I didn't know I had the faith to do that. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? I didn't know I had the faith to do that. <laughs> uh, please let me let me rejoice as I minister here today and teach this word. Primary word being: Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, not a kingdom. You do things for people. And uh, people do things for you and you give them something in return. It's usually a demic. But in the world that's how things happen. But here we have the Lord. We don't find very wealthy people giving their, uh, their all and their estate to someone who's done something for oh, I'm really appreciative of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my estate, the whole lot, lot, stock and barrel. This is the difference in it. When we serve, we serve a wonderful Saviour. We serve a beautiful Jesus. He's so beautiful. Hey? Our Father who art in he heaven is so beautiful. Holy Ghost is so beautiful. The Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days so beautiful. Do not fear. Hey? Do not fear. The world is full of fear. I, I, I've never seen such fear as uh, I witnessed in, in New York City. Unbelievable, the fear, the, the, the anxiety, the troubled mind. As, as you walk towards the crowds and the crowds behind you and you're in the midst and the troubled faces, the sad looks, the bitter looks, the, the angry looks, it's all written on their face. They're, they're, the wisdom isn't there. The wisdom of, of the, the only wise God, Yahweh, Sabbath, Lord of a warring people, it's not there. God makes us wise. He, he saves us. He establishes. It's just not there. And wisdom takes the sternness from the man and the woman's face. And, and, and gives it that childlike, fresh appearance. As people have said to me when I was in New York, wow, I didn't... How old are you? I was talking to an Iranian chap on the, on the flight, on the way home, on the plane. And... Uh, he was about 35, 36, quite industrious in attitude, you know, in mindset. Has a business in England. He, uh, originally from Iran, speaks good English, better English than I speak. I speak Australian English. This is not English. Slang, really. His wife also, uh, she is from Lithuania, and from what he tells me, a very intelligent woman, 
has one of the highest degrees you could have in accountancy. And uh, she has some sort of um, degree of other PhD and all that sort of thing. He explained that I didn't quite get the full understanding of it all. And we were talking about business and state of the world and and um, our people are so troubled and, and how he wants to come and live in Australia. His parents are in Dubai. He's Iranian. Wouldn't know it. You'd think he was probably Italian or something by the look of him. And he looked at me and he said, uh, oh, I'm 35 year old, 36, and uh, he looked about 56. But um, I said to him, well, I'm going towards 61 years old. He went, what? You're joking. I said, no. And uh, you see, that that's the Lord. I give the glory to Jesus there. I give the glory to Jesus. And I gave him my card when I finished and... He went his way. But I do pray that the Lord can open his eyes and save him. Um, the title of our message today is Little Flock. <laughs> Little Flock. That's the Lord's flock. Little Flock. You say, hang on, but wait a minute, it's... Uh, You know, it's a big world and, and there's all these people coming to the Lord. And are they? Are they coming to the Lord? These great big revivals, meetings, so to speak. And then on top of it, there's going to be a great revival before Jesus returns. In Australia, the great south land of the Holy Spirit. Don't be deceived. Don't, that's hogwash. It's downhill all the way according to the infallible scriptures of the Christ. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be before the coming of the Son of Man upon the clouds with a shout and a voice of an eye. So it's going to be. Eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. That's what we've seen in New York. Food, 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 food. Restaurants, restaurants, that's all you can see. Clothing stores, clothing stores, clothing stores. Jewelry shops, jewelry shops. People selling, people trying to sign you up, write you up. But like I said, the faces, worried people. A lot of worried people over there. Even the so-called Christians, church go, worried, worried, worried. There's no joy in them. Do not fear. That's a command there. That's a command. You see, the idea of commands are we fear, we tremble, and we do. Hey? We fear with reverential fear. We, 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 we tremble because he's an awesome God, and we do because that's what he's commanded. Hey? Do not fear little flock, not, not giant flock. Little flock, for it is Father's good pleasure to give you a hundred dollars. I'm talking kingdom. I'm talking kingdoms here. But this is the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Hey? The kingdom of the saviour of the world, meaning the whole world. If they want to be saved, if they want to take that worry away, take the heartache away, take the, the anxiety away, the Lord can do that. I know he can do it. I've laid hands on people and prayed for them and he has done it by faith. 
he didn't do it by faith. He done it by faith, the faith of the person being prayed for and my faith in him. God doesn't do things by faith. God does things by his own outstretched arm. He said, let there be light. And there was. When he said, do not fear, I accept it. Hang on. Jesus is saying, do not fear. Well, if that's the case, there's nothing to fear. That's why people said to me and my wife when we were down in Times Square, we were talking to different people, and they said, I don't, you better not go down the Bronx. You better not, especially the South Bronx, you know, you don't want to go down there because um, very dangerous down there, and there's a lot of, lot of uh, hoods and uh, hoodlums and, and, and you know drug runners and oh you would that's the first thing I did I said next stop South Bronx <laughs> and got on the train and started preaching got on the subway preached on the subway then got on the train and started preaching there and then automatically I had had a uh, helper this young young Bronx boy looking very hip hop gave him a brochure he sat there transfixed reading it while he was doing that I gave one to the colour girl next to him Afro American girl brown girl in the ring tra la 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 and she was locked in then another guy looked over and said, "With a, why don't I get one look on his face? So I hit him with one. So, then the Lord put it on my heart to give an offering to a, a, a straggly dressed person sitting there, Afro-American. And uh, then the young man that I first gave the brochure looking very hip-hop and very, uh, what would you say, swag, hip to the bop of the bebop, the bop, and he happened to notice me give an offer and he turned around and said, Hui, did you think the man, you know? And then later on he came out to me, pastor, uh, how are you? But there was a great move there. There was a moving of the Spirit in that little circle where the two or more are gathered in his name. And my wife and I gathered in the Times Square and we gathered at Madison Square Garden. We gathered at the Statue of Liberty. We gathered in the Bronx and we gathered at uh, the... Um, great uh, empire building there. My wife and I were there in the name of the Lord. Jesus is in the midst. We're two or more gathered in his name. I tell you, that train was feeling Jesus. <laughs> but little flock, see? Two from the little flock went out. Not a giant. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure. Fear not, little flock, because even though father doesn't really want to give, he does anyway. Even though he doesn't want to give, he does anyway. Because people might say something. So he gives anyway a part of his kingdom, very small portion. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. It's Father's good pleasure. It's not a good thing. It's not a pleasurable thing. It's a good, pleasurable thing for Father to give you the whole kingdom. Come on. Come on, have the run of the mill. Come on in. Hey? 
he he brought me into the banqueting house and the banner over me is his love he brought me into the banqueting house and the banner over me is his love he brought me into the banqueting house and the banner over me is his love yes the banner over me is his love we don't collect tides at paradise now the banner over me is love we don't collect ties at paradise now banner over me is love no we don't collect ties at paradise now banner over me is his love oh the banner over me his love Jesus is God at paradise now banner over us is his love Jesus is God at paradise now the banner over us is his love oh Jesus is God at paradise now the banner over us is his love yes yes the banner over us is his love. Oh, you, Jesus, you're just so beautiful. You're so wonderful, Jesus. You make me want to cry. Little flock, the LIF, the little international flock, or LFI, Little Flock International. He he has a little flock all over the world. Hey, we know the, the that the border of the little flock's garments are going to be extended in the great tribulation. We know that he will extend the border of the garments there. Great tribulation period. Seven year great tribulation. The world has never seen. Multitudes will come to the Lord in the great tribulation. I believe that because it's it's written. That's why I believe it because it's written. At the moment, little flock, little flock. There's two, you know. Um, Two things I want to say, but firstly, there was a guy um, many years ago, Mr. Tommy Hicks. He was very popular on the television evangelist scene. Tommy Hicks had this thing in his head that the the church was a sleeping giant. If if anyone knows anything about evangelism and and um, tele-evangelism and, and the Benny Hinn scene and the Joyce Meyer scene, the Pentecostal scene, the TVN scene, the God TV scene, all that sort of highfalutin hype. Well, Tommy Hicks had, had his finger in the pie there and they used to bring him on and he used to hype him up saying that the church of the Christ was a sleeping giant. Well, as soon as I heard it, I thought, hang on a minute. You know, common sense. Not even, you know, we don't have to go into the, oh, get into the spiritual. But common sense tells you that Jesus said he had a little flaw. Didn't he? Hey? So... um, where does all this, the rest of this stuff come from? Where does all this giant stuff come from? Well, when Jesus says he's a little flock, fear not, little flock, 
Whatever your lot, he enters all rooms. The doors being shut, he never forsakes, he never is gone. So count on his blessing in darkness and dawn. Only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only believe, only believe, only believe, all things are possible. Only believe. Fear not, little flock. Whatever your lot, hey, it doesn't matter. There's a variety of lots you can have. There's a variety of lots. So there's two major giants that I've read about in the Holy Bible. Uh, and neither have anything to do with the Church of the Christ. One was the, the the obvious, the giant Goliath, and the other one was the Harlot Church. Huge. Hey, let's go to Revelation 17. Have a look there. The Harlot Church, giant, giant church. Revelation 17, verse 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come and I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. There you go. There's the giant. There's your giant. It's not the true church. This whore church is in every country and city in the world I don't know any other church that's like that the whole church every country and city in the world I don't care if it's a little country town you'll find her there you'll find those purple robes purple rain purple rain Hey, you'll find her there. You'll find that harlot arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having that golden chalice cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Hey? There's your giant, the one world church, headed up by the Roman Catholic system. Roman Catholic church. It says the great, great harlot who sits on many wantons. So, a lot of people, you know, talk about Babylon and Rome and all sorts of cities, but it, that's a that's a typology. One city cannot be everywhere in the world. We know Revelation seventeen. We know without doubt that the Roman Catholic system is the great harlot she's called there in verse 15 I should say in verse 5 of Revelation 17 it, it says and on her forehead a name was written this great harlot mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth Hey, mother 
of every false church on the planet. I don't care which one it is, whether they like it or not, they're surrendering to her in one form, fashion, or way, or another. Think about it. I get so excited when I read Luke 12, 32. Don't fear. Do not fear. Oh, don't go down the Bronx. Don't go down, especially the South Bronx. You don't want to go down there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do not fear. Listen, when you're part of the little flock, you don't fear no man, black, white, rich or poor, great or small. Same in the female section. Black, white, rich or poor, great or small. You don't fear, no, you got no need to fear because you are obedient by faith. You are obedient to the Lord. And he said, do not fear. Okay, you said it. I'll do it. I will not fear. Down we go. Down the rabbit hole we go. Huh? Let's get on that train. <laughs> train ride. We get on that train. Get down there. Let that word loose. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hey. Oh, how wonderful. So, um, let me say, it's Father's good pleasure. Think about that. You think about that. It, Father's really happy about giving you the kingdom. He's a happy giver. Is that what you are? Are you a miserable giver? You whinge and whine and about giving. Look, if we're born of God, we're happy givers. Come on. That's when Father turns your nightmares into happy meals. Only He can do it. <laughs> Only Jesus can do it. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you, he's always giving, isn't he? Father's always giving. When I got up this morning, come on, we only got back yesterday. Got back yesterday, straight into it. I mowed the lawn and we sorted the luggage, cleaned up, had a bit of fellowship with my children and Rejoiced in the Lord for the victorious uh, outcome of the crusade, New York, New York crusade. Hey. And uh, back into it again. And Father's there giving us joy, giving us Holy Ghost assurance, giving us a tap on the back well done my true and faithful servants sister Jovi and brother Paul hallelujah and those who stayed with the luggage those who stayed at the camp at the paradise now camp sister Sue and brother Isara sister Roletta brother Clifford Brother Luke, Brother Shadrach, Sister Hannah, hey, Brother Philip, Sister Elaine, come on, Sister Brooke, Sister Bridget, hey, all locking in, praying, supporting, do not fear, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Me? Come on, let's personalise this. Right? Let, 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 let's, get, let's get family here. Let's get family. The family of God. I'm part of the family. 
the family of God. I've been born of his spirit and washed in his blood. I'm a joint heir with Jesus as I travel the world. I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Father's, Father's good pleasure, Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom of kingdoms in the kingdom realm. <laughs> but yeah, we have this uh, fella, Hicks, <coughs> going back over the years. <coughs> Benny Hinn and Joyce Meyer and Crefro Don, all of them, they all support him at that time. I don't know where he is, whether he's moved on either to heaven or hell. I don't know what the story is, but I haven't heard from him for decades. But Tommy Hicks, they boasted him and sang his praises and The Sleeping Giant. I don't know where that originally come from, but it, it just doesn't add up. It's an Acts 17 and 11, you know, that we're to check every single thing a minister says to see if it is appropriate, applicable, absolute, infallible. Hey? So... Uh, there's so much in this one oracle, uh, Luke 12, 32. Yeah, Jesus, you know, ultimately was never one to get bogged down in, in volume and voluminosity. <laughs> it's a new word, isn't it? Voluminosity. He was never one to get bogged down in numbers. He just went forward. He got down to the place where the, the baker's dozen. There was a there was a muster parade and they're falling out everywhere. And Jesus said to Peter, "You going too?" You know. So he's getting down to the nitty gritty. He was just going to go on. Jesus is going to move on on his own. <laughs> Might be someone down the road willing to listen. Can you say amen? Willing to do what he says. So I told a message, that little flock. Look, it's the most humbling thing in the world to do little. Are you with me? Not do little, but do little. Hang on, we could get confused here, you know, with, if the Irish were listening. Wait a minute now. It's a, it, it's a humbling thing to do little. When the Lord says do as much as you can. Now, I'm not talking that. I'm not talking that sort of little. I'm talking about to do little. I'm not talking Dr. Doolittle because he did little. But I'm talking to do little flock, you know. to to. When you do little flock, you, you humble yourself under the infallible word. You do what the word says. That's, that's doing little flock. That'd make a nice, wouldn't that make a beautiful T-shirt? Long T. Do you do little flock? Oh, she caraso ima baranda la la kata. Do you do little flock? And you could have a scripture underneath that, which would be Luke twelve thirty two. There's great reward. There's a great inheritance, countless, infinite, of for doing little flock, for being part of his little flock and not being, oh, big, 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 everything's big, think big. We're, we're, we're growing churches big, it's all big. When you hear churches talking about big, you know they're off the narrow road. Because that's the way that that's the language of the world, the TV. It's all big. Think big. Think big. Think BHP. Think big. We wouldn't have this if only we didn't think big. 
Is that what Jesus said to the apostolic men? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, Paul. Is that what he said? I send thee out as sheep among marshmallows. Think big. As you go, think big. Is that what the Lord said? I do not believe so. I do not believe so. It's the most humbling thing you can do. That's why the Lord said through Peter, humble thyself under the mighty hand of God. And he may exalt you in due season. I believe he's saying if you do humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, or which is the word of God, He very well may exalt you into his kingdom. That is, if uh, you continue Romans eleven twenty two. But if you don't, he may not exalt you into his kingdom. Okay? For these are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit of God. He didn't say, these are the sons of God who are born again. These are the sons of God who have been water baptized. No, these are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit. Now listen, when you are led by the Spirit of God, you are led into holiness. Not sin, not compromise, not lukewarmness, not fornication, not uh, amalgamation with whore churches. Right? Revelation 17, 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great. You want to be great? Join the harlot who sits on many waters. Oh, we're going all through the world now. We're planting churches here. We're doing this. We're doing that. Many waters. You're a many waters man, are you? We got churches in every city. We're doing this. We're doing that. We're thinking big. You ain't seen nothing yet. Baby, baby, you just ain't seen nothing yet. Here's something. Here's something you never will forget. You ain't seen nothing yet. No, no, you ain't seen nothing yet. Here's some. That's old Brian Houston, isn't it? Brian Rock and Roll Houston. He's got a name in New York City. It says in the writings, the most hip church, the most hip Pentecostal church in New York City. What a name. Hip to the hop, to the till you drop, to the bebop. <laughs> that don't sound like Jesus to me. Hey? Little flog. It's a humbling thing to do, little flog. Hey? To do very here and very there. It's a humbling thing to do Micah 7, 1 to 7. As Micah the prophet found out, humbling thing. To do Matthew 7, 13 to 14. Humbling thing. To do little flock on the narrow road, the narrow difficult road. It's a humbling thing. There's nothing more humbling than to do little flock, narrow road, very here, very there. Hey? We, as a fellowship, Paradise Now Church, we mention all these type of the scripture and bring it forward because that's little flock's teaching. Hey? That's little flock's teaching. That uh, Jesus rode a little donkey. He didn't ride a donkey, he rode a little donkey, which was the foal of a donkey. I know Christmas is finished the other day, as they say, and he's forgotten because they bring in that, you know, 
the Boxing Day. You know why they call it the Boxing Day sales? Because everyone goes in and punches each other out to get the clothes and the Nike shoes because they're selling for five dollars and they're usually five a uh, hundred dollars. They go and punch each other out. That's why they call it Boxing Day. Sound they box each other's ears. Riots break out in New York, in LA. You see them on TV wrestling. The women tearing each other's hair. And, see, that's the that's that satanic endemic, satanic endemic scene. <laughs> hey, manifesting self. It, it's the when you see the boxing day sales and all the women tearing at each other, pushing each other and. First thing I think is love your neighbour. But, you know, put your neighbour first. <laughs> hey, think, of, think of others more highly than yourself. They're thumping each other and scratching each other's faces, trying to get this bracelet or whatever it is. How, how ignorant, how stupid and how dumb and how out of control. No self-control. Hey? They definitely don't belong to little flock. Dear me. Hey? You know, God, even though he rode a little donkey and he had a little band of men, you know, he had a baker's dozen, they went through and told it the way it was. And and he had a little flock. Few find the narrow gate. Few little flock find the narrow gate. No one else. No one else find the narrow gate except little flock. <laughs> that makes a good song, doesn't it? A hey, little flock. Little flock in a world of rage. And so, um, Revelation 17, verse 2 says, With whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of... See the teaching? The wine of her fornication. The, the false teaching. You see that? Taken on anything. The whore church, the Roman Catholic church. They'll take any teaching and twist it and make it sound acceptable. Kings of the earth. Not short of a dollar. Speaking of greatness and, and affluence and influence. And committed fornication and in the inhabitants of the earth. That That's a vast people, isn't it? Inhabitants of the earth. Kings of the earth. They were, were so close. They were, it was labelled fornication. They were, they were so in there. They were so in one accord. Hey? They were so in one accord. I mean, even in Revelation seventeen twelve, the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. Verse 13, Revelation 17, these are of one mind and they will give power and authority to the beast. Okay? They will allow 
the best to have his way. Well, they're doing that now in the churches, aren't they? They're letting the beast, the Roman Catholics and the Pentecostals and the Orthodox, they're letting the beast have his way. Or, or the even the authority of the beast, Satan, is the head of all this. Hey, the whore church, the beast. The false prophet. Satan is the the leading man. Unbeknown to most. The devil himself. Hey? Um, getting the nod and the okay from the Roman Catholic Church and the, the, the wayward Pentecostal, the wayward Orthodox, and, well, I think the Orthodox, uh, they don't need to be wayward. Wayward, they just are wayward. <laughs> Orthodox is wayward. Jesus was not Orthodox. Jesus was uh, unorthodox. Jesus was not penny costal or a penny pincher. Je- Jesus, he pincher, yeah. That's not a Doberman pincher. That's what Benny Hinn has. Doberman pinchers, doesn't he? Anyone comes near the door of Benny Hinn, the Dobermans are outside and they pinch the people. They say, don't go in there. Benny's in there with the jets. Benny and the jets. Hey Ben, how's Paula going? Have you worked out another lullaby? Hey. No, told him a message that a little flock. It's a humbling thing to do, little flock. Hey, humbling thing. These are of one mind. That's why Paradise Now Church, little flock. We don't get on with these churches because we're not one mind with them. We don't get on with the lies, false doctrine. We don't get on with these churches because they, they're of one mind with the world. They do the Christmas, they do the Easter, they do the rabbits, they do the false teaching, they do the tithing, they do the women pastors, they do the rock and roll music. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see in the the salvos in um, New York City, they're they're doing hip hop blasting on echo blasters just to get the people over to put a coin in a in, in a bucket. Hip hop, and one Salvation Army girl, she's rapping. You know what I mean? She she's getting right down there. You know, she's got that echo blaster there. Let's groove tonight. And she's really rocking it. All the moves and everything. Hang on a minute. What's going on? We go over and check this out. I went over and had a talk to her. Hey? And I put it to her about our brochure, what we had written there, Christmas, and tithing, and women pastors, and this and that. And she was a bit shocked, you know. She said, oh, my husband and I, we're going to be giving, we're going to be given a church by the Salvation Army. In other words, they slot them in. They slot them in as the pastor and the pastor's wife of a church. That's the way the salvos work. And they said, oh, we, we'd really like to have a church like yours. And we want to be out there and on the street and do this and do that. 
And I said, well, if the Lord's called you to do it, dearie, you and your husband will do it. There's no, I would like, or what I want. Has the Lord called you to do that? Are you called? Are you even saved? Are you born again? Blah, blah, blah. Now, getting back to this beast, he, he's the, the beast is actually the watchdog of the one world church. Okay? And <coughs> the Lord allows the beast to watch out for the one world church until such a time when he lets the beast devour the one world church. So, when Jesus gives the nod, the beast will devour the one world church. It's a horrific thought, isn't it? That all these churches, they really think they're taking ground, they're coming together, we've got this unity, you know, we've got this peace and we've got this friendship. Well, they do, and i see it in seen it in New York. But Jesus ain't there, I can tell you. Jesus ain't there. He ain't in it. It's just a, a Bible thing. Terror Bible thing. They got things going, you know, they're connecting and, 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 and locking up and they're in the in the loop. How many times churches wanted me to get in the loop? You know, brown girl in the ring, tra la 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 la. I said, No way. No, uh, 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 uh. no way. I sit alone because of the hand of the Lord. I won't come into it. I, I won't get tied up with him. I won't even uh, go into their filthy buildings unless just to rebuke them or drop a message off. How we did Roman Catholic churches in, in New York. I went in and dropped the message in there. The one guy was praying there and I walked in and huge cathedral. I think it was in, in the name of John Paul II. Had his plaque out the front with John Paul's head on it. John Paul II, is that right? I don't know about these things, these popes and dopes. Went in and there's a guy praying, tapped him on the shoulder and gave him the message. That would have been a bit of a fright, wouldn't it? Gave him a brochure, left a couple there on the way in, on the table, and then I went outside and preached. And as they came in and came out, they took literature. So that might get us, the, the seed might, you know, enter in, you don't know. What condition of the heart? The penny might drop. Get the good oil. So, uh, Little Flock is the title of our message today. Little Flock. Isn't that wonderful? So, there hasn't been a lot of mention of this sleeping giant, you know? This giant church, sleeping giant. Few find the narrow gate. When that Tommy Hicks was on the Benny Hinn show, this is, what, 20 years ago? 21 years ago? I can't remember exactly, but let me say, as soon as he said that, I, I, I thought of Micah 7, 1 to 7, I thought of um, Matthew 7, 13 14. I thought of Luke 12, 13 too, when they're blabbing on about this big church and this great revival and people coming in. The only revival that will be coming before Jesus is a, a revival of evil and we're seeing it everywhere. We're seeing the, the, the degradation. We're seeing the down, downhill thrust. Right? We're seeing it everywhere. We're seeing the falling away. We're seeing the, uh, the Roman Catholic Church very cunningly, uh, serpently, having her way, this mother of all prostitute, prostituting churches. Right? They couldn't wait for the husband to come. 
I couldn't wait. I had the prostitute. Thinking, oh, you know, well, I tell you, it's the biggest mess. It's, it's, it, it, it's paralleling what Eve done. Or should I say, yeah, well, Eve, she was the initiator. She was the big, big mess girl. And then you had uh, Abraham and Sarah. Sarah stuffed it all up too, didn't she? And, and she told, given orders to Abraham, you get in that room and lay with that Arab, Sheila. You get in there and lay with that uh, um What's her name? Hagar. And then they bore Ishmael. And voila. There you have it, isn't it? The, the Muslim fame. With oh, Ishmael with his cherry chest. I mean, hairy chest. And, and his fuzz on his head, whatever they call it. The hat on the head thing. Go around big mouth and then telling people what to do, setting them on fire and pushing them over in shopping centres. That's Ishmael. That's Ishmael. Coward from behind. Surprise attack. Surprise! And then the joker pops out of the box. and <laughs> Surprise! I'm back in black. I'm back in black. Hey? That's Ishmael. That's the Muslim belief. But glory to the Lamb. As I said to Ibrahim, the 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 Muslim carriage driver, carriageman, in when my wife and I were riding the carriage. It wasn't by the work of the flesh. It was by the spirit we got in that carriage. I didn't want to get in that rotten carriage. By the spirit. Okay, I have a witness to get in. We And we ministered to Ibrahim, the Turkish Muslim. How's that? Huh? Turkish Muslim. I said, hey, Ibrahim. There's a major difference between your prophet and my prophet. My prophet is the great prophet. His name is Jesus. You know, Muhammad, he, he, Muhammad was, never rose from the dead. Muhammad never was a king. And Muhammad was n never considered as God. What do you think of that? Well, uh, silence is golden. Hey, it was silent night for a while. And then he realised he better start talking again because if he wants to get his tip, <laughs> he, he can't go feeding with me, I suppose. But that's the way it is. Little flock rode the carriage. We got into the, and ministered, got into the carriage and ministered. Hey, it was sort of like Philip, wasn't it? Getting in the carriage with the Ethiopian, the chariot. But he actually ran beside it, didn't he? I wasn't up to run beside his carriage <laughs> in the cold, I tell you. It was minus three, I think, that day. Minus five. But little flock are big people. Big hearted people. Big love people, big truth people, big Jesus people. But they're only a little flung. You see, when Jesus come riding through Jerusalem on a, on a little donkey, they thought he was a pushover. He ain't no pushover, <laughs> nor is little flock paradise in our church. We're part of the little flock. We're part of the holy remnant in the world today. And I've had people come to the fellowship, they think you're a pushover. I've had people say to me, even in New York, I'm going to minister, I want to minister in your church. I said, really? You want to minister in my church in Australia? 
I said, I'll tell you what, I don't just let anyone in the pulpit of our, our church. I don't, you know, people want to minister in our fellowship. They want to get in the pulpit in in Paradise Now Church. It's been like that for years. I just say, nah, sorry, you don't have the goods, man. Simple as that. No matter who they are. If they don't have the goods, I'm not going to let someone in the pulpit to, to feed my sheep rubbish. They've got to be little flock preachers. They've got to be of the holy remnant. They've got to be sold out. That's holy remnant, sold out. None of this compromising and lukewarm and uh, chuck wagons going round with sausage sizzles and compromising with every dog in town. We're not into that. Jesus came to seek, find, save the lost. He specified the lost. They, most of these people, they're not. They say, "Oh, we're not lost." They're more lost than lost. You're not lost. What's this false teaching? What's this adding to the word? What's this tithing garbage? What's this Christmas? You're not lost. You, you're lost. I'm telling you, you're lost. That's not found, because <laughs> found is on the foundation of Christ and the apostolic man. Can someone say amen here today? Huh? I don't go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I go to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. When all around is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand When I need a helper When I need a friend I go to the rock I know from whence my help comes it comes from the maker of heaven and earth And all things seen and unseen Hosanna in the highest of places So Father wants to take pleasure in everyone. He wants them to be part of his little flock. Right? He wants to give them the kingdom. The Lord wants to give his kingdom to humans and they don't want it. They don't want to humble themselves. They don't want to suffer. They don't want to forsake the world. They don't want to forsake themselves. They don't want to forsake forsake the lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and the pride of life they, they don't want to put Jesus above their wife and children they don't want to put their husband above their uh, children they don't want to put I should say Jesus above the husband and the children they don't want to put Jesus above the wife and the children they want to keep it family first. They're, they're not little flock people. They're not holy remnant people. They're just one world church. The beast is behind it all. These mega churches, the beast, the beast is there. The Illuminati, the, the, the great harlot. Right? I get all these Roman Catholics saying how great their church is. I said, yeah, that's true. It's the great harlot. I believe that. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> I already know. that it, it, It's uh, the great mother of harlot. But she's also the great uh, mother of abominations of the earth. So let me finish up today by reading a scripture to you in the writings of 1 John. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 John today, the 27th of the 12th, 217. 1 John, chapter 4, starting in verse 4. You are of God, 
little children. There you go again. Giant children. You have little. You have, <laughs> you have got little children and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us, and by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. I like the way... John says, spirit of error. Okay. The same one spirit is behind all truth and the orchestrating of all truth. And the same, another spirit is behind all error. So where you see error, it's a foreign spirit. I want anyone listening here to show me the error the biblical error not grammatical error biblical error not historical error but biblical error in my teachings on my Facebook my YouTube and my website show me the error I say it's the truth I challenge anyone. I don't care how great the theologian, I don't care how pompous the reverend. Show me. Show me. Don't just say stay away from that church, Paradise Now Church. Don't just say stay away from Pastor Paul Sheehan. He's bad news. He's this and he's that. Show me why. And I'll show people why I say stay away from the Assembly of God. Stay away from the Seventh Day Adventist. Stay away from the JW. Stay away from the Baptist cult. Stay away from Hillsong. I'll show them why in Scripture. And then I will put it right in front of them what these leaders and these churches believe and say. And it won't, it won't line up with Scripture. Full stop, period. So... Fear not, little flock. Whatever your lot, he enters all rooms, the doors being shut. He never forsakes, he never is gone. So count on his blessing in darkness and dawn. Everybody said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Enjoy your day, dear listener. <laughs>